we speak about the nageshwara jyotilinga sut ne kaha ab main nageshwara jyotiling bare mein vastare hai bataunga jise sabse acha kaha jata hai once there was this forest and this forest region they live many rakshasas many demons many demons however there was a particular demon by the name of dharuk and dharuk he was married to a demoness by the name of dharuka and dharuk he lived a life that was very much negative he lived a life that was very much toxic it is said he was the definition of chaos he was the definition of corruption the definition of war wherever dharuk went he would cause pain he would bring suffering destruction and disruption to everything and everyone it is said wherever the devotees would chant the name of the devis and the devtas wherever yajna would be performed wherever puja would be done wherever havan would be done dharuk would go and he would create havak daruk would go and he would stop all of the praying all of the devotion he would instill fear into the hearts of all of those noble individuals all of those brahmins those sadhus those munis and those rishis no one could have prayed in peace no one could have prayed and offered their devotion in peace and harmony they were always interrupted and daruka is dulahin she was also very much troublesome very much mischievous and she as well she caused pain she caused suffering however daruka was filled with the most negative the most toxic quality you and i can have in our lives you all know what is the most negative quality we can have It starts with a a arrogance you see that word called arrogance Arrogance is one of the most negative things any person can have. Humility is said to be the most beautiful. Arrogance is said to be the most negative. And Daruka, she was puffed with pride, filled with arrogance and ignorance. Why? Because she had a boon from Parvati Devi. And because she possessed this boon, arrogance filled her life. Pride filled her life. So whenever she was not causing harm whenever she was not causing chaos and destruction she was meditating upon Parvati ma whenever she was not hurting those that were praying she herself was praying and chanting to the mother of the universe every moment she had her she chanted Pela Jula Himalaya Juli Pela Jula Himalaya Juli Shiva ki narakka hai ho Jagadamba bhavani Jai Daruka a devotee of Parvati Ma and she had a boon and that boon that Parvati Ma gave her was that the forest that they lived in Dharuka had the ability to transport that forest wherever she would like that was the boon the forest that they lived in Dharuka had the blessing of Parvati Ma to transport that forest wherever she would like and because Dharuka had this boon pride entered into her life arrogance entered into her life and in this world that we live in as we grow as we progress sad to say many people they become very much arrogant the moment someone has something that you don't have arrogance enters the moment someone has a little more than you have arrogance enters and in today's world there are various types of arrogance you all want to make i guess how many times of arrogance they have boys three there are three types of arrogance you all want to make i guess what are the three types of arrogance that exist in today's world 
The three types of arrogance that is said to exist in the world today is individual arrogance, comparative arrogance, and antagonistic arrogance. I'll say it again. Individual arrogance, comparative arrogance, and antagonistic arrogance. Let's look at the first one. Individual arrogance. Individual arrogance is where a person or individual, they have an inflated opinion about themselves. They have an inflated opinion about their skills, their talents, their abilities, and their capabilities. And sad to say, that inflated opinion they have about themselves may not be true. Example, let's say you have a presentation to do in work or you have a presentation to do in school as a group. And the teacher or your boss tells you, when you come to present, don't come with no big set of paper. Do little cue cards. Have your notes written out very small so you can ref refer to it. So, you and your other two group members, you agree. You make your cue cards. Your other group member makes the cue cards. But let's say one of the group member, he walks in or she walks in on the day of the presentation swinging their hands. So you look at them and you say, well, where's your notes? Where's your cue cards? And they look at you and they say, I don't need no cue cards. I am so good. All the knowledge is up here. I can speak off the top of my head. So you look at this person and you say, you sure about that? They say, yes, yes, don't doubt me. You don't know who I am or what. So you say, okay. So you start the presentation. You do what you have to do. Your other friend does what he or she has to do. And then you reach to this friend now. And when this friend goes to present his part or her part, what do you think happened? The freeze. The mind gone blank. He has nothing to refer to. That is an example of individual arrogance. Where that person, he had that opinion that he is so good, he can remember everything up here. And he chose to not make little notes so that he can actually remember in case something goes wrong. That is individual arrogance. Where that inflated opinion about yourself, where that inflated opinion about your accomplishments, your achievements, your skills, your talents, may not be truthful. And how many of you in the world today, you know people with individual arrogance, where they back themselves so much. <laughs> and when it is time to do what is necessary, they cannot do it. You know it have a saying, walk the talk the talk, but walk the walk or something like that. There are so many people, they talk the talk. But when it is time to walk the walk, they can't. Individual arrogance. The second type of arrogance is comparative arrogance. This is where you have that inflated opinion about yourself. You have that inflated opinion about your achievements, your accomplishments, your skills and your talents. And you compare it to someone else. Comparative arrogance. Where you compare what you can do, your skills, your talents to someone else. For example, let's say you're a musician or you're a singer or you're a drummer. And you go to a function as a guest. And in the function, there's a nice group, they're singing and everything. But rather than you clap with them and sing with them, you fold your arms like this. And in your mind, you think, hmm, this group is no good. If I was on top of that stage, I would have mashed up this place. That is comparative arrogance, where you are comparing what they are doing on the stage to yourself. And we see it in the world that we live in today. So many people look at others and look at what they can do and they compare. They compare rather than appreciate what the other person is doing. So that is comparative arrogance. And the third type of arrogance is antagonistic arrogance. This is where you become so arrogant that you feel you are superior to others around you. So superior that you can talk to people how you want to talk to them. You can treat people how you want to treat them. That is antagonistic arrogance. And we live in a world where this is very much prevalent. Where people with a little power, people with a little name, people with a little status, they talk to you and I how they want to talk to us. They treat us how they want to treat us. All because they believe they are superior. And we see it in the world today. Sometimes your boss may talk to you how he or she wants to talk to you. Sometimes a teacher 
may talk to you or a lecturer may talk to you or your baba may talk to you or he or she chooses to talk to you because they believe they are superior and those are the three types of arrogance how many of you you see that last one you see people who are filled with antagonistic arrogance where they talk to you how they want to talk to you they treat you how they want to treat you we see it in the world today and those are the three types and which one do you think daruka had do you think daruka having the bone from parvati ma was filled with individual arrogance comparative arrogance or antagonistic arrogance some may say she was filled with all some may say she was so arrogant that she was filled of pride within herself that she believed she was better than everyone she was filled with so much arrogance that she compared how good she was to others she was filled with so much arrogance that she treated others how she wanted to treat them so she was filled with all three and being filled with this arrogance because of this boon my dear devotees that power went into head and she spoke to people how she wanted to speak to them she hurt people she bring she brought harm to people chaos to people destruction to people and most importantly destruction to those that were noble those that were chanting and praying and being devotees of the lord and daruka and daruka they live their lives torturing they live their lives humiliating they live their lives bringing so much pain so much chaos it is said the brahmans the rishis the munis the sadhus the bhaktas of the earth they couldn't bear it anymore every time they did worship the worship was spoiled every time they put their hands together to pray they were either being interrupted or they were being hurt or they were being killed it is said things came to such a point where everyone became scared to even pray where all the devotees on the world they didn't know what again to do and it is said feeling failure feeling that fear feeling that complete sense of bewilderment being so confused unable to perform their puja unable to pray some of the brahmans some of the devotees they went to a sage by the name of aurav and going to the sage this other great sage right now we are facing so much trouble right now every time we want to pray rakshasas such as dharuk and dharuka they are causing pain in our lives they are killing us they are hurting us they are taking the lives of innocent individuals and we are exhausted oh great sage we are tired we are frustrated we are confused we are lost and we don't know what again to do other than to turn to you we want you to guide us we want you to protect us out of looking at all the brahmans looking at the rishis and the devotees of the earth listen to what he does going to sage out of and telling him how much pain they were in out of looked at them and he said listen i will put a curse i will put a sharab on the rakshasas and the curses if ever they are to hurt you if ever they are to take the lives of anyone on this land they will immediately fall unconscious that was the curse he said if you are telling me that dharuk and dharuka and all the other rakshasas they are bringing you pain and chaos and havoc into your lives i put a curse i put a sharab that the next time they do it and the next time they try to hurt any one of you they themselves will fall unconscious will fall lifeless on the floor now let us pause here and let me explain something to you the devotees of the earth they were facing problems they were facing darkness they were facing a lot of negativity and they decided in order to get rid of their negativity they would turn to sage aurav and he would be the one to guide them he would be the one to assist them and help them in your life and in my life when darkness enters when the storms of difficulties and the storms of trouble come who do we have to turn to who in your life can you turn to when difficulties arrive who in your life can you turn to when troubles arrive when pain and suffering arrive the devotees of the earth they turn to say a sage who are you and i turning to it is said each and every one of us at some point in time we will face difficulty we will face pain we will face suffering none of us are free from it but how many of us we have someone to turn to in our times of difficulty how many of us we have a friend 
who we can count on in times of difficulty it is said in this world that we live in when failure comes when destruction comes when chaos comes when sadness comes when defeat comes there are four types of people we can turn to and it is said if we have one out of these four types of people we can achieve success again we can come out of whatever darkness we are in who are the four types of people we can have or we should have in our life when defeat comes when sadness comes when pain comes the kind hearted individual the optimistic individual the loyal individual and the mentor figure those are the four types of people we can have in our life and if we have one out of those four when difficulties come when defeat come we will be able to get back up on our feet the kind hearted individual the optimistic individual the loyal individual and the mentor figure let's look at the kind hearted individual the kind hearted individual is that person in your life who is filled with kindness who is filled with compassion the moment you fall they are there to share their love with you they are there to be compassionate towards you share their kindness with you and that kindness can take various forms for simply just saying positive words to motivate you or giving you help like financial aid to take you out of whatever darkness you are in it is said this kind hearted individual they believe in you they see that you have a good character a pure character and in order to assist you they will do whatever it takes they will do whatever is necessary how many of you listening right now in times of difficulty you have the kind hearted individual who you can turn to a individual who knows you a individual who will be compassionate towards you a individual who will do whatever it takes to help you how many of you have a kind hearted individual in your life how many of you you are the kind hearted individual for someone else the second type of individual we can have when defeat comes is said to be the optimistic individual this is that person who is very much optimistic very much positive about everything when the difficulties come when the troubles come they will be the one to show you the light at the end of the tunnel they will be the one to show you that darkness doesn't last forever they will be the one to remind you that good will always come negativity cannot last forever they will be the one to remind you that good always triumphs evil how many of you you have that optimistic individual in your life when darkness comes they are the positivity they are the light in your life they are that individual who will remind you that this darkness this pain is only temporary success and goodness and greatness will come how many of you have that optimistic friend how many of you you are that optimistic friend for someone else it is said if you don't have that kind hearted friend you don't have that optimistic individual then have a loyal individual in your life loyalty is the key in today's world my dear friends loyalty is the key and loyalty is something that is diminishing very very quickly how many of you you have a loyal individual the loyal individual you may not see them all the time but you can call on them you can count on them you can depend on them this is the individual that will walk with you barefoot this is the individual that will walk with you in the sun through the rain through the snow through the ups through the downs through the good and through the bad times they will never leave you stranded the loyal individual he is the one that will pull you up when you have fallen in the ground how many of you you have that loyal individual in your life that when difficulties come you can count on that person to stand with you rather than abandon you how many of you you are the loyal individual to someone else if you don't have the loyal individual if you don't have the kind hearted individual if you don't have the optimistic individual then find a mentor figure in your life a mentor is someone who has gone through a mentor is someone who has gone through all the ups and downs he has faced so many positive so many negatives a mentor is that person who can share 
the experiences with you. The mentor is that person, when you are fallen, they will give you the advice and they will show you things from different perspectives. They will share some of their life lessons with you. And by that mentor being that guide in your life, you will be able to strive and climb back up the ladder. And you know something? If somebody asks you what is a mentor or who is a mentor, what will you tell them? You know what a mentor is? A mentor is someone who will not shape you in their image. But a mentor is someone who will provide the opportunity for you to shape yourself. I will say that again. A mentor is someone who will not shape you in their image. But a mentor is someone who will provide the opportunity for you to shape yourself. How many of you, you have a mentor figure in your life? How many of you, you have someone who you can look up to and is giving you the opportunity to learn and grow and create your own image? How many individuals in the world today, they have a mentor and that mentor is making that individual into a mini version of themselves? We see it in the world today. So many people look up to someone and that individual rather than doing what is needed to be done and shaping this individual or giving that individual the right steps or the right tools to shape themselves, that mentor creates a mini version of themselves. How many of you, you have that mentor figure who will provide you with the opportunity to learn and grow and create your own image? How many of you, you have that mentor who will not make you an imitator, but will make you an innovator. Hmm? In the world we live in today, there are too many imitators, too little innovators. How many of you, you are the mentor for someone and you will provide them with that opportunity to shape themselves? How many of you, my dear devotees, you have one of those four in your life? When you have fallen, when you are facing defeat, when you have facing failure, when you face sadness and pain, how many of you, you have the mentor figure to turn to? How many of you, you have the kind-hearted, the optimistic or the loyal person to turn to? If you can have one out of those four, you can get back up on your feet and start again. And in the world we live in today, we are not fortunate to have one out of those four. If you are fortunate to have it, may Bhagwan bless you. Sage Aurav, he was all of this for the devotees on the earth. They trusted him. They saw him as a mentor. They saw him as kind-hearted. They saw him as loyal. They saw him as optimistic, positive. They knew they could have put his, their faith in him and he would have rewarded it. And so said, so done. Looking at all of them, he told them, don't worry. If ever the Rakshasas, if ever Daruk and Daruka and the others, they try to bring harm to you, they will fall lifeless, unconscious. And hearing these words, my dear devotees, all of the devotees, all of the bhaktas of the land, they celebrated, they felt peaceful, they felt safe, and they were now able to rebuild and start over again. When the word went out to the rakshasas, to the demons, they became very much afraid, they became very much scared. My dear devotees, listen to what takes place. Hare Yama Tatsat Hare Yama Tatsat Hare Yama Tatsat Hare Yama Tatsat yeah, The moment the demons, the Rakshasas heard of this curse, they became so worried, they started to panic. And Daruka looked at all of them and said, No, don't panic, because I have a boon from Parvati Ma. And if Aurav is sending a curse, a sharab, that we, if we harm anyone on the land, we will lose our lives, well then I will pray to Parvati Ma and I will ask her to lift this forest that we reside and take it over the ocean. And when our forest is placed over the ocean, it will be detached from the mainland and we can live as normal there. Whenever any boats, any sailors, any ships would pass by, we can attack and live as normal. And Daruka suggesting this to all the other Rakshasas, they were overjoyed. Daruka sat with love, sat with devotion and chanting to the name 
ऑफ पार्वती मा ओम सर्व मंगल मंगल ये शिवे सर्वाट सारी के शरण ये त्रयम्ब के गौरी नारायणी नमोस्तुते इट इज सर पार्वती मा ब्लेस्ड हा एंड बाय दैट ब्लेसिंग दैट फॉरेस्ट रीजन दैट धारुका एंड धारुक एंड द अदर राक्षसस लिव्ड इट वाज लिफ्टेड इनटू द स्काइज एंड ट्रांसपोर्टेड ऑन टू द ओशन अवे फ्रॉम द मेन लैंड एंड द मिनट दैट फॉरेस्ट was placed on top of that ocean by the blessings of parvati ma my dear devotees dharuk and dharukan all the other rakshasas they started to live as normal and any time a ship would pass any time sailors would pass the rakshasas would attack leaving their their little forest entering into the ocean they would take them they would capture them they would imprison them they would even kill when the time was necessary and they got away with it for the simple reason they were not attached to the main land so the curse that our of would have sent it mattered no lo- longer because the demons they were no longer on the main land and every time the ships would come every time the boats would come every time the sailors would come daruk and his ministers his other rakshasas they would enter into the ocean and they would attack daruka would attack they would take everyone their children their families and they would drop them in that forest region imprison them in a prison cell and it is said once my dear devotees a couple of boats came and in one of those boats there was a individual by the name of supriya and supriya he was the definition of love and devotion not to anyone but he was filled with love and devotion to bhagwan shivji It is said he was such a devotee that every moment he had he would chant om namah shivaya his mind always focus on shiv baba around his neck was the rudraksh mala and his entire body you know what his body was covered with what is the body of shiv baba covered with basma ash it is said supriya his body was covered with ashes basma and let me ask you something what is that basma represent when shiv baba covers himself with it what does it mean what does it teach you and i you all know take a guess priya kavir <laughs> excellent excellent that basma my dear devotees it indicates being detached from the materialistic world my dear friends everything in this world can't turn to ash everything can be destroyed and shiv baba having that basma smear over him is devotees having that they have that basma smear over them it indicates detachment from the materialistic world being detached from everything that is negative the anger the greed the hate the jealousy the pride the ego everything that is negative being detached from it the basma signifies that everything in life is temporary we all at one point in time will return to ash more things than not when burnt it will become ash supriya body covered in the ashes indicating detached from everything around the world with the rudraksh mala around his neck he as well was captured by daruk and the other rakshasas and when he was captured by daruk you know what he did he didn't panic he didn't cry he didn't worry he wasn't nervous he wasn't scared he wasn't anxious he allowed them to take him along with all the other boatmen along with all the other sailors and they placed them all in a prison cell and while individuals they were worried they were nervous they were scared supriya he sat he made a beautiful lingam and you know what he started to do he didn't start to pray only but he started to teach all of those that were around him about om namah shivaya om namah shivaya devotees many of times we hear that we chantings we do things and we don't understand why we do it and one of the most popular mantras we are told to chant is om namah shivaya what does that mantra mean what does that mantra represent namah shivaya five syllables what does it signify why do we chant it why do we put om 
before it. It is said Om, in this case, in front of that mandra, it represents the five duties of the Param Shiva, which is destruction, creation, sustenance, concealment, and showering of blessings. And when we can chant Om before Namah Shivaya, Shiv Baba blesses us with the creative energies. He blesses us with the energy to sustain, the energy to destroy that is negative. He blesses us with His grace, His love, His devotion. That is the power of Om before that mantra. Shiv Baba blesses us with everything that is creative, everything to destroy, sustain the good within us. He showers us with His grace. Namah Shivaya. Na stands for Nagendra. The one that has the what? The snake around his neck. Nagendra Haraya Trilochanaya. Basmangaragaya Maheshwaraya. Nityaya Shuraya Digambaraya. Tasmai Nakaraya Namashivaya. The Na representing Nagendra. Shiv Baba who has the snake as a garland, as a mala around his neck. The Ma in Namashivaya stand represents Mandakani Salila. The one who has his head adorned with Gangama. Mandakani Salila Chandana Charchataya. Nandeshwara Pramada Nanda Maheshwaraya. Mandra Pushpa Bahu Pushpa Supujataya. Tasmai Makaraya Namashivaya. The She in Namashivaya stands for Shiva. The one that is auspicious. Shivaya Gaure Varanara Vinda. Suryaya Daksha Dwarha Naskaya. Shrini Lakantaya Vrishadwajaya. Tasmai Shakaraya. Namah Shivaya. Diva stands for, represents Vashisht, the one that adores the Lord. Vashisht Kumbura Bhava Gautamadi, Munidra Deva Chitra Shekaraya, Chandraka Vaishwana Ralochanaya, Tasmai Vakaraya, Namah Shivaya. And the Ya in Namah Shivaya stands for Yaksha, the one who takes the form of the Yaksha. Yaksha Swarupaya Jaradaraya. Pinaka Hastaya Sanatanaya. Devyaya Devaya Digambaraya. Tasmaya Karaya. Namah Shivaya. And that is Shiv Baba. He is the one that will send everything that is creative into our lives. He is the one that will preserve the good in our lives. He is the one that will destroy the negative into our lives. He is the one that will show us with that blessing, that grace. He is the one that is Na, Nagendra, the one with the snake like a mala around his neck. He is Mandakani Salila, the one who head is adorned with Ganga Mata. He is the one that is Shiva himself that is so auspicious. He is Vashisht, the one that is adoring the Lord and most importantly that Yaksha. He is that Yaksha, that form, that spirit. And that is our Shiv Baba. And by chanting that mantra, Om Namah Shivaya, we gain all of the blessings of Shiv Baba. It is said when creation was being done, when creation was taking place, Om Namah Shivaya was one out of the five mantras that Shiv Baba gave to the world. Until this very day, we all chant it. Supriya, this is what he was doing. While he was captured by Dharuk and Dharuk and the others, he was praising and explaining the greatness of Bhagwan Shivji to everyone present there. And devotees, it is said, six months went by. And Supriya, he continued to chant the name of Shiv Baba. He continued to glorify Shiv Baba. He continued to teach all of those about the power, the might, the greatness of Shiv Baba. However, one day, he got caught. One of the Rakshasas saw him chanting. One of the Rakshasas saw him praying and chanting Om Namah Shivaya. Listen to what takes place as we are coming close to the end of our Katha tonight. Hariya Shambhu Natabhanake Bole Nat ban ke chalayana Prabhu ji chalayana Jai and Shiv Baba appeared immediately and the moment he appeared all of the Rakshasas that were about to attack Supriya they stopped the Parvati Ma. She started to pray to the Universal Mother, my dear devotees. She said, Oh Ma, Right now, at this point in time, I need your help. 
Parvati Ma manifesting in that same forest region. Daduka looked at her and he said, she said, Ma, Shiv Baba just blessed the entire forest to be freed from everything that is tamasic, everything that is negative and impure. And that means my race will be wiped out. Oh Parvati Ma, I am your devotee. I am your child. I am your servant. All I wish is for my race not to die. That is what she wanted her. And Parvati Ma now knowing fully well that Shiv Baba just promised a boon that the forest will be free from those that are negative. And here, Daruka is asking for her race not to be wiped out, for the negativity not to be wiped out. Parvati Ma looking at Daruka, she says, Daruka, if that is your wish, if that is your desire, I will go and I will talk to Shiv Baba. And Parvati Ma appearing in front of Shiv Baba, appearing in front of Supriya and all the other Devotees there, she said, Oh Bhagwan Shiv, Daruka, she's my devotee, she's my bhakta. However, you gave a boon that everything that is negative and tamasic will be wiped out, that this forest will be a place where all can live and reside. But Shiv Baba, by you giving that boon, Daruka and her entire race will be wiped out, and I cannot allow that to happen. She is my devotee and she is seeking my help. And just as how you will appear to your devotee in times of need, I have to do what I have to do. I have to help my devotee in times of need. She said, Shiv Baba, your boon will only last till the end of this yoga. And the moment this yoga comes to an end, from the next yoga, the tamasic qualities will rise again. Daruka and all of those that are negative, they will reign supreme again. And that way, we both get our wishes. That way, we both protect our devotees and serve them. You will allow your boon to last till the end of this yoga. And when this yoga ends, I will allow Daruka and the other rakshasas to reign supreme once again. Shiv Baba looking at Parvati Ma, he says, Devi, if this is what you are asking, then so shall it be. However, when this yoga ends and my boon comes to an end, these rakshasas, these individuals with tamasic negative qualities, they will cause pain and cause suffering again to my devotees. And I cannot afford for that to happen. Therefore, I will manifest myself as the Nageshwara Jyoti Linga. And anyone who prays to me, who prays to this ling, whatever desires they have, whatever wishes they have, it will be fulfilled. I will manifest as the Nageshwara Jyoti ling in this forest. And when the time comes for the negativity to rise again, when the time comes for those that are toxic and tamasic and impure to rain havoc again, I will be here to protect. I will be here to serve. And these were the words of Shiv Baba. Supriya and all of the bhaktas, all of the devotees, they praise Shiv Baba, they glorify Shiv Baba, they worship Shiv Baba. And at that point in time, he manifested in the form of the Nageshwara Jyoti Linga. It is said any individual who has desires that need to be fulfilled, they go to that Lingam, they do puja to that Lingam, they offer their love and devotion to that Lingam, Shiv Baba blesses shiv baba guides shiv baba protects and this my dear devotees is my katha very simple katha speaking about very important points supriya a bhakta of shiv baba his fate was rewarded him sage out of he was kind-hearted he was compassionate he was optimistic he was loyal he was a mentor figure he protected those when the time came I say to each and every one of you, may Bhagwan Shivji bless you, may he guide you, may he protect you. And the demons of the world and the demons of your life, the Dharuk and the Dharukas of your life, they will never succeed. When Shiv Baba is there, he will always be there, no matter what, to protect, to guide, and to serve. Prem Subhalo Shankar Bhagwan Ki Jai Umapati Mahadev Ki Jai